This is a video tutorial for the Edge Elastic lesson on choosing good text evidence. And we are currently going over question 10. And I'm, I'm going to give you the answers to this question and I'm going to explain my thought process in answering this question so that when you get to the next question, it's easier and you'll understand what you're doing. Okay, for this question type, it's a two-part question type. And things like I-STEP and other testing uh, tend to have this question type. And what goes on in this question is that in part A, you have a question and you answer the question about the text. But in part B, they want to have evidence to support your response in part A. So these are uh, quotations from the text that should be supporting your answer in part A. And when we answer this type of question, we actually want to read the part A first, and I'm going to go to part B and actually answer part B first, and then go up to part A again and make sure that our answers connect with each other. And the reason we do this is because I see students do this all the time. They get part B correct, but they don't get part A correct. And really, part A and B should match up with each other. They, they need to go together. Okay. So our question part A was what was the grandmother's goal when cooking? Okay. What did she want to do while cooking? Well, I'm going to go to part B next and try to figure out which pieces of text show me what her goal is in cooking. And notice in part B, we need to have two pieces of evidence. So we're getting two answers. All right. A. And like any great time, our kitchen was hopping on Saturday morning, or at least the Saturday mornings when my family made the two-hour check to visit for birthdays and long weekends. Okay. Well, I don't think this really shows, like, what her goal is in cooking. It just shows that her kitchen was busy. So I don't think that's a good piece of text evidence. Let's go on. Her kitchen came alive with the sizzle of bacon on the stove that hits a waffle batter hitting the iron and the sturdy chunk of a toaster shooting eggos into the air. Okay, again, I don't think this really shows a goal in what she was trying to accomplish while cooking. So let's move on. She didn't care what we ate, only that we all had what we liked, whether that was microwavable glazed donuts for my little brother, green salad, not eating for my mom, or classic banana pudding for my dad. Okay. Well, this kind of shows me a goal here. She wanted to give people something that they liked. So I actually think that's a good piece of text evidence, and I'm going to mark it here, okay? All right, which was exactly why she'd whip up a batch of plain vanilla pudding for me, a three-year-old horrified at the idea of defiling it with slimy chunks of fruit and smushy cookies. Okay, well, I actually think this is... Um, this is good. So let's think about this, okay? Um, it kind of shows that she tries to get what she likes again, okay? So let's go with that. All right. I think that the pudding came from a factory that the vanilla is artificial, only that we were making something together. Okay. That doesn't seem to really show um, her grandmother's goal either. So I'm going to keep these answers. I think those show that her goal was to make people happy. So let's see what our choices are here. To try new recipes. Well, none of the text evidence supports that. To impress her neighbors definitely doesn't support that. To share in a meal together, maybe a little bit, but the text evidence I show doesn't show that. And then to make her family happy, yes, it definitely shows that. Okay. And I'm going to go back again to double check this. She didn't.